five of the Western Finals tied up two apiece as the Rockets have reclaimed the home court here at Toyota Center. Game five. Tell your friends it's coming on. Who will have the rhythm tonight in game five of the best of seven here in Houston? Tied up at two games apiece. A couple of guys who came up huge the other night. They Pitt must Thunder ride the Kevin. And James Harden. They always First come in the He just gets a pass to fit, too. Kevin Durant and the Warriors. I've seen that somewhere. Were they dreadful yeah, every fourth game. quarter the other night? <laughs> you, think, you think it's the same outfit? Of he, no, it ain't the same. It's got to be the same. How will Steph That's Curry and the Warriors respond to having their 16-game postseason home winning streak snapped by Chris Paul and the Rockets? There were questions about Clay Thompson after a left knee strain in game four. We'll have the latest on him from David Aldridge in just a moment, as well as the latest on Andre Iguodala, who sat out game four. And with that, we welcome you to TNT NBA tip-off presented by Auto Trader. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Charles Barkley waiting all day for this one because this series has really gotten good all of a sudden. Two games apiece as we wait for uh, game five an hour from now. Uh, the action will be great tonight. There will be a poignant moment uh, before they tip off tonight, and we will be bringing that to you live uh, as uh, the memory of the 10 students who were killed at Santa Fe High School last Friday. A, cer a ceremony will be held, and the, and the players on the... Houston side will be wearing the Santa Fe High School colors on their rocket uniforms tonight as they play game five. Houston Rockets fans are the best in basketball. And so that will come your way uh, closer to the top of the hour. And uh, it's going to be the, I believe, the uh, choir from the high school is going to be here to sing the national anthem. Members of the senior class are being treated to the game tonight um, as we remember what happened a week ago. Meantime, we play game five of this series and with the memories of game four pretty fresh as Golden State had the double-digit lead in the fourth quarter, let it get away, let the home board advantage get away. Andre Iguodala didn't play in that game. Clay Thompson got hurt in that game. What is their status for this game? Let's go to David Aldridge, DA. EJ, Andre Iguodala is out tonight with that left knee contusion he suffered in game three. Steve Kerr said he was dying to play, but the fact of the matter is he still hasn't been able to run since he suffered that injury in the fourth quarter of game three. So he's not playing. Clay Thompson is going to play. He's out here now warming up. No knee brace and got through practice, got through shoot around this morning without too many ill effects. Now, obviously, we will see how effective he can be once you really are playing, but he's out there right now. The Warriors know that no matter who's on the floor, they have to play better than they did in game four, especially in the fourth quarter where the ball stuck and they lost their home court advantage. And we watched the film, it's pretty, pretty evident the things that we need to do differently on the offensive end for 48 minutes to sustain that effort, to get better shots, make them work a little bit more. We just want to be, you know, put us in good positions to score and, you know, get everybody involved. So for me especially, I got to do a better job of catching the ball closer. So definitely guys are pissed off, but encouraged as well, you know, like, you know, I love the way this team respond when our back is against the wall. You know, I, I, don't, I don't mind our backs being against the wall because I know, you know, what we're capable of and I know the level of focus and intensity level that this team bring, bring when that is the case. Now, the Warriors played a short rotation in game four. 
and it looked like they ran out of gas at both ends of the floor down the stretch. So you can expect Steve Kerr to maybe go to a longer rotation tonight to try to get his star players a little more rest so that they're fresher down the stretch, EJ. All right, thank you, DA. Uh, and again, we'll see what he does with Andre Iguodala unavailable tonight. Meantime, Houston went with seven players the other night in game four. That's all Mike D'Antoni played. Yeah, that's why I, I, he keep hearing these guys make excuses about it. they got tired. They had a 12-point lead. So they just didn't play well. The offense became stagnant. They took some awful shots. But the main thing I hate when they said it doesn't get the Rockets credit. The Rockets won that game. I, I thought the, one of the difference, the subtle difference, and I, we talked about it before game four, and he, Chris Paul was the primary ball handler in the last five minutes of that game. He got uh, Ariza going a couple times. He got Eric going. So I think that was a little subtle change Mike D'Antoni made in the fourth quarter and in that fourth quarter it was a 25 to 12 Houston advantage as Golden State went three for 18 in the quarter they had four turnovers they only had one assist they did not make a three pointer in that decisive quarter and that came after KD and Clay Thompson and Curry and Draymond Green all played the entire third quarter in which they outscored them 34 to 17 and had those 18 to 3 and 25 to 8 runs. But that last possession was all discombobulated, Shaq. Yeah, it was discombobulated, you know, very uncharacteristic of the Golden State. A lot of people question why Steve didn't call a timeout. He and Draymond team. trying to there. Yes, yeah, Draymond trying to call a timeout. But it's a veteran team, usually know what to do. You know, just, you know, you would think that, you know, Kevin with his length would probably take two or, two or three more dribbles, get to his spot and take that last shot. But he gave it to Clay. Clay wasn't ready. I know Clay is a guy that can catch the ball and shoot it right away, but you know, his feet wasn't set. He, he, he wasn't in great possession, and they lost the game. But I agree with Chuck. The, the Rockets did a great job, especially on the defensive end, and they won that game. You know, when you're up 12 and you're not shooting well, Chuck, you're right. You can't yeah. go to two. I'm tired. Yeah, yeah, you can't pull it. I'm tired yeah. hard out. I mean, you're up 12. You know, everybody talk about Iguodala. Iguodala's a good player. But they wasn't, when they were up 12, they just said, man, we really miss Iguodala. But I'll tell you the main reason, Ernie, it takes away from what the Rockets, the Rockets did offensively and defensively. This game, that game started out, Kenny, 12 to nothing, Golden State. And Mike D'Antoni said, there were so many people jumping off the Houston bandwagon, they were getting hurt. And he said, you know what? And, and, if, and if I had watched that 12 nothing start, I might have jumped off the bandwagon, too. But to their credit, they came back from that 12-point deficit and the 12-point deficit in the fourth quarter. Well, he was watching it, so that means he jumped <laughs> off for a second, too. Uh, I, I think overall, you know, as much as, as well as he used to play uh, offensively, I, I did think defensively this was a, a stand that we had not seen in this series or even in the playoffs that they had to make. Uh, defensively so they did a great job defensively uh, overall again I can understand why Golden State doesn't give Houston credit because a couple of the reason is I thought they played selfish it, it wasn't offensively and and, and, and and that's typical not typical of what they have been doing let me they typically you, let me, have been giving the ball up and having others I thought let me show you a graphic okay. and this is, it illustrates perfectly what you're talking about regular season 29 assists per game 69% of their field goals were assisted. And you see the numbers in the San Antonio series, like 27 and 68. The New Orleans series, about 31 assists, 71% of their field goals. And in this series, under 20 assists per game. But, yes, and and but, not even half their field goals have been assisted on. But there's a reason why, Ernie. Because the way the Rockets play defense, they've turned Kevin. Kevin has a little guard of him every time. So the Rockets, uh, excuse me, the Warriors, instead of playing their regular way, they're trying to exploit Chris Paul and James Harden, who are trying to guard KD. So sometimes, Ernie, when, you, when something's so easy, you kind of fall in love with it. Like you says, he's got a 6-1 guy guarding him, and they have become very complacent and very stagnant. And, you know, we're taught sometimes, as, you know, especially as great players, when there's a mismatch, forget the play. This guy's too small, he can't guard me, let me go. And they have done that, and it's had, you know, it has been taken away from what they do. And also, normally. Kevin's making it worse, too, Ernie, because he's not taking advantage of a little guy guarding him. He's shooting a fadeaway jumper most of the time. I guarantee you, if he would go down in the post, 
they would have to double. He gets the ball two out, two four on the floor, and they don't have to double. Because if he makes the shot, it's perfect, but he wasn't making the shot. If he would go down in the post when he got James Harden or Chris Paul going him, that would force the Rockets to double him. One other thing the Rockets have done defensively after Klay Thompson in game one had so many catch and shoot opportunities and that's what he likes to do. He had 15 of those. He's had a total of 16 in the next three games. So they've toughened up in the defensive end on Klay Thompson. They've taken that away to an extent and uh, and as a result this series is even and this place tonight Kenny will be rocking. Well they've taken it away and so has Golden State. Again, what Chuck said about the, the mismatch Ch and, Ch and Shaq said about trying to take advantage of the mismatch because at times, yes, you should take advantage of that. But then after a while, sometimes you got let's run our play. Let's run our secondary break. Let's run the things that we are good at regardless of the situation. What we've all said about, and everyone, not just us, everyone who watches Golden State basketball would say what makes them unique is that they have three great players and they share the basketball. And they don't worry about a mismatch or what have you at times. The ball still moves like a ping pong. It is, it is getting stuck like there's honey in a jam on the basketball and they can't get rid of it. Would you say that was the first time you ever saw the Warriors play hero first basketball? Time ever, first time ever. Yeah. That I looked at the team and said, I don't like watching this game. Yeah. If I'm if I don't like watching this as a as a basketball fan, the way they're playing, that's the first time I've ever watched them and said that. Yeah, yeah. but would you also say it's hero ball because they're not making the shots? If they're making the shots and everything, you can't make, but you they can't make a steady shots, diet man. of those. No. You, you can't make a steady diet of those. No, no. That's why I said if they were making the shots, it's just I don't hero know if ball. you can make a steady diet of those type of shots that they were getting. But they and just it, wasn't getting them in flow, Shaq. Right. They were going just one-on-one, -on -one, shoot a jumper. That's not the way they play. They, uh, this building here last night uh, played host to uh, one of the great entertainment acts uh, in the world. Uh, Justin Timberlake was here and will be here again like God, eh? she tomorrow night, place. apparently. Yes. Right, Chuckster? Yes, he will be. And, and Chuck was here last night. Yes, I was. Took a big bunch of folks. All from the girls from work yeah. got me a big suite. I'm, I'm, you didn't girls, take none of the guys? I took no guys. And listen, what kind of stuff is this? But, but listen to this, uh, folks. <laughs> That was really nice of Justin give me a shout out last night. Okay, because we couldn't hear it. I don't think he said your name. <laughs> yeah, so it don't count. Uh, well, that's you hear that America. I, I assume he said well, it. I just that was really nice. You just walked down there and just did that. No, he didn't say your name. <laughs> yeah, 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 he didn't yeah, yeah. say your name. You like a 16 year old group look at. <laughs> Come on. Oh, he said my name. Hey, listen. Justin listen, just said cause, my name. Because y'all don't know famous people. Sorry about that. Please. And, and I uh, thought it was really nice that you guys took a team photo last night. Also, I thought that was. Uh, oh, that was really oh, great. Oh, oh, come on, oh baby. Oh, goes back hey, to the hey, old. Oh, baby. Who's that? Moses. Justin, anytime, there? Justin. Look at Justin. Moses anytime, and Justin. Trash. And here it was last night. Oh, you so, did take a. You took yeah, one yeah. of the guys. You took Jeremy, <laughs> and Jeremy, and, uh, Jeremy uh, Levin, and Bill Callen. You took Bill. You there. took all the girls. Well, Bill got my bodyguards ticket because he. Yeah, it's a couple people that don't even work here with us. That you took pictures. No, it was really cool. Uh, I, I, these girls worked so hard. We had a blast. We had a blast. Hey, guys, I'm going to take y'all to the uh, Beyonce concert then. No, y'all you know, work hard. Well, yeah, take them down to Bulldog. We go to Jay Z's. Yeah, take them down Bulldog. to Bulldog. Yeah, they work hard. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what that is. What hey, is that? underdog, I'll take you down to Bulldog after the show. What is uh, that? We, we're in Houston. There's no Bulldog in Houston. <laughs> Yo, 